Hey guys, okay, so we've had a request on Instagram by Megs. Uh, okay, so basically said, hello, thanks again for all your tutorials. I'm learning so much, I have a question. If I'm wanting to scale down my pattern pieces to fit in an A4 pattern specification document, is it just a matter of scaling down the pattern pieces using the free transform grab, the corners and hold shift method? Um, will I have to change any of the thic line thicknesses? Is there a quick, easy way that I'm missing? Thanks a bunch. Okay, <coughs> so I'm assuming um, what Megs is asking is basically transferring this pattern to uh, an A4 document so you can then print out and obviously uh, either display it or let's say preview or maybe show your client an overview of that pattern without having to print out that huge uh, full-scale pattern on either PDF or A0 etc. Yep there is a really simple way you can do this so first of all what I'm going to do is I've got my raglan sleeve pattern here which is one of the tutorials we created about a week ago a little bit over a week ago and I've just basically arranged it into a neat pattern that will allow us to fit uh, on a square page or A4 page for example. So at the moment this is the full scale pattern you can see here that this is uh, let's have a look Let's zoom in a little bit. So you can see here, these are actually centimeters. This is one CMC allowance. This is my full scale pattern, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my big selection tool. I'm gonna simply click and drag over the entirety of this pattern so all of these pieces have been selected. I'm then gonna go edit, copy. Let's go file and then new document in Adobe Illustrator. And here I'm gonna go for, let's go print. And then you should have A4. You can also do US letter, but let's go for A4. And it'll give us the millimeters here. Let's put it in centimeters, just because I always work in centimeters. And let's click Create. And as you can see here, this is our A4 page. It's absolutely tiny in comparison. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to go Edit and then Paste. As you can see, our pattern is far larger than that A4 page, so we now need to scale it down. And there's one of two different ways you can do this that I'm aware of. I'm sure there are other ways you can do this. So if you have any comments or other ways of doing this, then please let us know. It's always good to share information. <coughs> okay, so let's begin. So what I'm going to do is, as I said, this is my pattern piece, but I want to scale it down so it fits on this A4 page. Um, so what I'm going to do is get my big selection tool. I'm going to click and drag around the entire pattern. You know what? I'm just going to group it just so it's one item. makes it easier for me to move around. And when you click on this with your big selection tool, you can see that you have these little scaling icons. And here that you can see you can scale it down, and that's great. Only problem is, is that is not a, um, let's say, uh, proportionate scale. You see how I can change the dimensions of this pattern completely. I can make it very odd looking indeed. So one of the ways is simply to grab this corner and then simply hold down the shift key. Now the shift key basically locks it. You see how now I can't actually transform it in any other way apart from scaling it down proportionately. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scale it down to roughly the size I'm looking for. And then I'm gonna drag it onto my A4 page like this. Uh, we can maybe like move it over to the corner ever so slightly. It's a big section tool. You can just click and drag this around. It really helps that it's been grouped. And then it's gonna go to this corner again. I'm gonna hold down the shift key. I'm gonna click and drag until it fills my A4 page just like that. And then obviously you could have some descriptive text here. So we could just simply create a text box. We could just go to our tool on the on the left hand side, create a text box. And here we could put, you know, demonstration of raglan, I can't type, raglan sleeve, yada yada yada, etc, etc. Let's change that. I really can't type today. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that again. Okay. Um, so, you know, you could have certain specs, information, whatever you want to put in here, and you can simply add that. You can also increase the font size, etc., whatever else, change the font as well. Um, yeah, we use Railway Light. There you go. So, and this is simply how you'd create it. Then, obviously, you would just simply go File, Save As, and then you'd go Desktop or wherever you wanted to place it. Let's call this Raglan. A4, and then just click, and then we want to go for PDF, Adobe PDF, and just click Save. And I'll save that as a PDF document or an A4 PDF document, which you can then obviously print out. Otherwise, you can always go, um, what is it, Control P on your computer, and this will allow you to print that off uh, from your home printer. Obviously, you want to make sure that you're going to fit that to page. Obviously, then all the information's in there. Otherwise, you know, if you turn off Do Not Scale, you might lose some information there. So let's go fit to page and obviously print. So that's one way of scaling down your patterns. Let's just get rid of all of this. Another way is probably a little bit more precise. I've just gone back to my full scale pattern here. I'm just going to go Big Selection Tool, going to click over this. and obviously just going to group it just so it's one item. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it all. I'm going to copy it. 
I'm going to paste it into this A4 page. Once again, it's far too large. And another way of transforming this, I'm going to right click. So with this, whole, with this entire pattern selected, I'm going to right click and go transform and then scale. And then in the scale box here, you can see we can do it uniform, non-uniform, so you can horizontally scale it down by X amount, vertically X amount. Or if you do uniform, you can scale the whole thing down by about, you can see what 80% looks like. And you've even got a preview as well. So maybe 80% is too big. We can do 50. Let's just click the preview again. Okay, so this is another way that you can actually scale this down. Let's maybe go to 30. You could even maybe, uh, let's click OK. You could maybe even on this piece of paper here, um, you could say, so pattern scale down by to 30%. Pattern, I can't. 30% of original size. Um, so this gives you a little bit more information when it comes to, so it's an actual proper scale rather than um, you just sort of like scaling it or free transforming it. You can actually mention what scale that pattern is. So I hope that helps. Um, what else can you do with that scale? Let's have a look. Don't really do this a huge amount. Um, let's go to scale once again. Ah, yes. Okay. This is something that was also asked when it comes to strokes and uh, effects. So for example, let's go back. I'm going <coughs> to, let's just go back to that full size pattern. Okay, here we go. So let's just select that. I'm going to go right click and then scale. Transform, scale. So for example, uh, at the moment, the line width is obviously quite pretty. It's the right size. For example, this one's slightly thicker. It looks very clean. It's the way that we produce our patterns. Well, what if, what happens if you basically scale this down uh, at the moment because we have this ticked, scale strokes and effects, because we have this ticked, it'll scale that down so it's proportionate. So when it has on your A4 bit of paper, they'll all look very similar. If you don't scale down the strokes and effects, so if you untick this and you go, let's say, 28% preview, click OK, you can see that it's actually maintained the original lines. So for example, the pattern used to have I think it's believe it's two points. Yeah, so the existing full scale pattern had two points, whereas the inside line was one point. So simply clicking, so let's go back to transform, scale. So simply by ticking this, it means it'll scale those strokes and effects down to keep that pattern nice and clean. Or if you prefer, untick it and it won't. Um, Okay, so there's something else that I just want to touch on very quickly um, because we get quite a few questions about this and it is kind of falls into the same category as scaling or this, this kind of technique of, let's say, increasing the size of your pattern. So a lot of people ask us, can you grade in Adobe Illustrator? And the answer is yes and no. Um, yes, but not the way you might think. So for example, if we were to take this pattern piece here, for example, and we were just simply to, let's say, scale it out there. Now that you might consider, in fact, you know what, let's just, uh, just so we can compare, let's copy and paste a new one in there. And then I'm just going to free, well, I'm going to transform it out, obviously holding down the shift key to keep it consistent. So let's say I did that. Now that might look like it's a grade, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work. A, for a start, we've done it by hand, so we have no idea how much we expanded the block by. But also, we don't know the direction in which to expand this point to this point, this point to this point, or even the direction of that expansion. So you can't grade patterns in Adobe Illustrator simply just by doing that and hoping for the best. You also can't, um, let's say, grade your block by doing a scale, for example. Let's say, oh, I don't know, let's increase it by 109%, just plucking uh, numbers out of the the sky here or the air. Okay, you couldn't necessarily do it that way either because once again, you don't know what 109% is. You don't know if that's a size 10 or 12, but also this doesn't necessarily mean it's going to fit with the rest of your patterns. When it comes to grading, and I'm not a grader in any way whatsoever, um, I'm certainly not going to claim to be. We, when we produce our basic blocks, we draft each one individually, point by point, using a set of instructions. We do not start off with a template and then grade from that template. We draft each one individually, point by point. This includes your made to measure blocks, but also our standard sizes. So I'm not a grader in any way whatsoever. However, uh, my assumption when it comes to grading, without a huge amount of um, let's say research, is that essentially you grade out in directions and quantities. So for example, uh, let's say this is the direction you'd grade this point out, this direction you'd grade this point out, same with this one for example, same with this one, and I'm literally just drawing directions just 
without any idea whatsoever. I'm just simply demonstrating the point that this is possibly how you would grade in Adobe Illustrator. So, sorry, let me be very clear. If you would need to be a, you'd need to, you'd need to go to university, you'd need to study grading in order to do it in Adobe Illustrator, but it is perfectly viable. You can grade in Adobe Illustrator if you know how to grade in the first place. So for example, let's say this is the directions that we're grading out in. And let's say we know the measurements. So let's say, let's just create a little point here. This is how you might do it if you're a grader and I'm not. You'd let's say take this point and you go, right, we're going to go up by 0.5. That is, let's say, a grade up from this. This is UK 10. Let's say that that is a UK 12 grade. And we could take this point here and we go, okay, once again, it's 0.5 out. And then we'd rotate it around that existing point. Sorry, this isn't very clean. Let me just move that down. Let's get that into position. You then rotate around that point until it hit the direction of that grade. I'm sure there are lots of graders out there right now going, oh my god, what on earth is this person doing? And it's true, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just basically assuming or making assumptions on grading because I'm not a grader. So once again, um, let's say this point here, perhaps for a size 12, it would go out by, I don't know, minus 8, for example, hit copy. And then you'd rotate it around this point until you got to... There we go, until you got to the direction. It's being a little bit tricky. There we go. And then obviously you would start to draft your um, you start to draft your graded block. But there's also another issue when it comes to this um, is the lines. So for example, the bezies would also have to be graded similarly, if that makes sense. So it's not particularly easy grading in Adobe Illustrator. But once again, I'm not a grader, so possibly if you are a grader and you're watching this and you could be like, oh my god, this, this could totally apply to what I'm doing, that's great. And if so, please let us know because it would be great to hear your feedback on this concept because we get a lot of people asking this question. But that is essentially the concept. So just to reiterate, you cannot grade your blocks just simply by transforming, even though it looks like you can. This would most possibly be the correct technique if you were a grader and you knew exactly what you were doing. Um, I think some other grading techniques, and I'm just guessing here, because what I've seen in the past, is where you actually separate the block up. So for example, and I'm going to do this very rough. I'm going to do this very rough indeed. So let's say we have the pattern here. We create a line. We then go Object, Expand, click OK. OK, sorry, that would need to not be a dashed line. We just get a straight line. We go Object, Expand, click OK. And we could then basically slash this block here by using the Pathfinder tool. And we have tutorials that show you how to do this. Oops, let's go back. Let's just take this line. Let's copy it. OK, so let's do that again. You could slash this block here, for example. You could then paste in that object again. And you could perhaps, I don't know, put it here and here. Let's just get rid of this. Let's get rid of all this information. We don't really need it. And you could then, for example, slash this block up into various different panels. Oops, wrong one. This needs to be higher up. There we go. And then I'm assuming, I think I've seen this done for grading before. You would then, obviously, it'd be got by minus 0.5, perhaps. OK. This would go out by minus 0.5, perhaps. OK. You know, uh, you could potentially grade your block like that, if that's one possible technique. But once again, uh, it is not how you might think or how you might expect. You cannot just grade your block by scaling. OK, um, that's the end of a very wishy-washy <laughs> uh, concept about grading. But I wouldn't recommend it in Adobe Illustrator unless, of course, you know exactly what you are doing when it comes to grading. Anyway, thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, any more suggestions that people had would be very, very helpful. Uh, or very useful. Yeah, we could certainly have a look at um, creating some tutorials for your requests or suggestions. Thank you for watching.